A mama bear begged a man to help her cub and he obliged. No one could have prepared him for what the bear would do to thank him years later. Robert Briggs and his wife Suzanne lived just on the outskirts of the Rocky Mountains. He loved the environment and so did his wife. They would go on hikes together every weekend regardless of the weather. Robert spent days mapping out the best trails and rating them according to difficulty. It was his favorite thing to do. He wrote down where he could frequently see certain things, from wildlife to special plants. For example, if there were a family of foxes, Robert would take notes of their location and habits. That way, he was also able to track the local animals that surrounded them. In some way, he had got to know them, even if they weren't formally introduced. He had a list of indigenous animals in the area and so he tried to spot at least some of them on every walk. Well, at least the ones he wanted to see. The mountain lion was quite low on his list, and for obvious reasons. He was, how, quite obsessed with seeing bears. As dangerous as they were, Robert was convinced that he had found the right spot and was able to stake it out. He desperately wanted to observe some of his favorite animals. This was much to his wife's distaste. She hated the idea of her husband getting close to any sort of predator, especially one that would tower over him and could end him with a single swipe of its paw. It took Robert over a year to find a spot where the bears liked to hang out. However, he hadn't quite worked out the bears' movements yet, so he was always overly cautious, especially because it was the season for mothers and their cubs to be hanging around. And as the saying goes, no place in the world is more dangerous than the spot between a mama bear and her baby. It was a beautiful day in late spring when something miraculous happened to Robert. He was on a hike moving towards the spot where he could see the bear when he heard an awful cry. It wasn't something he had heard before, so he was unsure as to what was producing it. He kept his wits about him and attempted to follow the cry through the forest. It took him almost half an hour before the cry began to sound like it was right in front of him. He cautiously broke through the bush, and that's when he saw it. The source of the cry was nothing like he could have expected. She was pacing up and down, crying loudly. For a split second, Robert couldn't help but think he had just walked to the end of his life. He couldn't turn his back on her because she would perceive him as prey and start running after him, and would definitely lose in a physical fight. He was stuck, and for a full minute he remained frozen on the spot, waiting for the bear to pounce. That is, until he noticed something interesting. The bear barely seemed interested in his presence at all. She acknowledged him with a quick look and sniff, but continued to pace up and down. Robert knew that this was extremely unusual for a predator and tried to understand the reason for her behavior. That's when he noticed the two cubs hiding in the brush behind her. She was a mama bear. Usually, a bear with cubs would immediately tag any intruder that could be perceived as a threat to her babies. So why was she so disinterested in him? Robert looked around for clues and slowly came closer to see what she was crying about. That's when he saw it. He hadn't seen it before because the mother's big body had blocked it out. In front of her was a deep pit with steep walls. A pit that she couldn't even reach down. Robert thought that something important must be down there, but he needed to get closer to know for sure. So, he did something crazy. He got down on all fours and began to slowly crawl towards the big bear and the pit. The whole time he tried to remain passive and not pose any threat to the mother. His plan seemed to work and the bear let him come close. As he got to the pit, he looked down and confirmed what he originally thought. Sure enough, there was a little bear cub at the bottom of the pit. It didn't look good at all. Robert couldn't help but wonder how long the cub had been down there. It probably hadn't eaten or drunk in days. It was barely moving, and the mother's cries confirmed that she too knew it was close to death. Robert knew that what he was going to do was crazy, but he did it anyway. He just prayed that the mother bear would figure out what it was that he was doing and let him do it. He took out his rope and gear for when he faced cliffs and dug in a hold. He then abseiled down into the pit and picked up the cub. Placing the heavy little creature over his shoulder, he then began to use his rope to pull himself up out of the pit. It was an arduous climb up, but eventually he managed to see the end. It was just at this moment that the mother bear tried to paw the cub from Robert's shoulder. He shouted at her to stop in fear that the cub would fall. 
She backed off, and he managed to get out of the pit. He had a nasty scratch on his shoulder thanks to her swipe, but other than that, was unscathed. He laid the poor little cub down and left it to the mother to save. She picked it up quickly and retreated into the woods with the rest of her family, without any more than a look back at him. Robert was just grateful that he managed to help and overly ecstatic at his interactions with such a magnificent creature. He quickly made his way home to his wife to tell the tale. Little did he know that his and the bear's paths would cross again in the future. Just four years later, Robert was on his way to his favorite spot. He loved watching the bears play in the meadow and had been visiting the same spot ever since he had saved the bear cub. He felt that in some way he had earned the peaceful right to spectate. However, that day was different. He had a follower, one that he had not noticed at all. As Robert approached his favorite spot, he was happy to see a little family of bears playing. He sat down his backpack and was about to unpack his food when something whacked him from behind. Before he could even react, he was on the floor. His head was pounding and there was blood gushing from his arm. He frantically looked around for his attacker and that's when he saw it. A vicious mountain lion had turned around from its jump and was now approaching him again, ready for the final strike. Robert began to shout at the top of his lungs in hope that it would scare off the predator. The mountain lion didn't seem concerned at all and flexed his paws to jump on him. But then something else happened. Before Robert, a large shadow emerged from the bush. In one swift action, it swiped at the mountain lion, hitting it hard on the head. The wildcat scowled in pain and then ran away into the bush. Robert lifted himself up and slowly tried to process what had just happened in front of him. A bear had emerged and attacked the mountain lion on his behalf. He now sat face to face with a giant bear and thought he had just gone from bad to worse. But the bear simply looked at him without coming closer. It locked its gaze on Robert, and that's when he realized that it was the same mother bear he had helped four years prior. The bear simply looked at him a little longer and then sauntered off into the bush. It was almost as if to say that now the two of them were even. Despite being injured, Robert managed to get up and stumbled home. He was able to walk away with just a few scratches, and all because of an act of kindness he had exhibited a few years earlier. From that point onwards, he made sure to advocate for bears and their emotional intelligence, regardless of what the local hunters and even his wife thought. What an incredible story. Would you have followed the cry? How would you have felt facing down a mountain lion? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and until next time.